there. <laughs> <laughs> Better than the short bus. Oh, I'm on that sometimes too. Oh, oh. How's everyone doing this morning? No slouching. We still got people coming in. All right. Well, well, well. Yeah, give it a few seconds. I see some new serger owners on today, which is great. I know we had some upgrades and some others diving into. Um, New surgers, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. good to see you all joining us. And well, they took advantage of Surger Month last that's month. That's right. That's right. Well, coupled with some of the other specials we still have ongoing with, uh, well, Bernina and Baby Lock. So, yeah. And I know, uh, well, it's been a interesting <laughs> year but yet. I believe successful virtual club year, unique. Yeah. So congratulations for participating, hanging with us, and getting through all the technical. <laughs> I was thinking challenges, all of our, ones all of we've our, had, the ones you've had. Yeah. I was yeah. thinking about that last month embroidery club. Yeah. We lost power for the whole day. <laughs> yeah, we just squeaked through. Uh -huh. Yeah. And we couldn't log off. <laughs> Yeah, that was fun times. <laughs> but we learned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we learned how to get through a year, still connect with you guys, but virtually. Yeah. So we have, well, join us in welcoming Carol Clothier today. We got a Pleasant Stream pillowcase, plus many other pillows and and projects, actually. Pillow related projects. I, I think we'll you'll see that. Um, and I, I gotta say, like, I didn't know what Batiste was other than a yeah. hockey player somewhere up in Canada. Um, but this Batiste fabric is so, uh, Scott wants a comfy. pillowcase. Comfy. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, this, this is pretty neat stuff. Um, so why don't we, uh, roll into our quickly into our presentation and then we'll, we'll move right along. So, of course, uh, welcome to our Pleasant Dreams Pillowcase Serger Club, the last one of the year. Um, we are planning our path forward for next year. Of course, uh -huh. things are starting to change for the better for everyone. So we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. But I think one thing's clear is many of you, many, many of you have asked us to carry on with virtual in some capacity. So... Uh, that's certainly part of our goal. I know many of you have also asked us, please open up the store so we can get into that classroom again. And that certainly is our goal. So how that looks and feels, well, to be determined, but we'll uh, do our best to meet everyone's needs. So uh, upcoming programs. Well, look, it's getting nice outside. So we're, uh, we're, we have less to talk about here, but we do have tomorrow night at six o'clock, our virtual shopping spree mm -hmm. right Alyssa? we do and i see some goodies over there so this should yeah. be a good one um and then we'll do it again next thursday we no no i i you. <laughs> so so hold your hold on god hold on bless to your hat god bless every one of you <laughs> this could be very interesting entertaining entertaining oh. entertaining and you know I'm, I can always come up with a surprise or follow. Yeah, you can actually. That'd be great. <laughs> I will not even be heckling you. And I'm going to have my cell phone turned off. So if Alyssa <laughs> calls and goes, you're not supposed to do that. Well, yeah, <laughs> she'll have to tell me in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I'm leaving my cell phone in the, in the safe. Okay. Yeah. Well, good. All right. Uh, so that's our Facebook live Ooh. this Thursday, next Thursday. Um, so last night, well, yesterday morning, I had called Lori and she's been doing her Serger Fun Club. So she was tied up most of the day. She called me back about 7.30 last night. She it goes, was. She goes, Scott, I just needed to get back to you. Her voice was shot. She goes, I, I know you're still working on that waiting list because um, I had left her a message. And she said, if you can get a, a handful more people, then we could do it. She goes, go ahead and put the dates in. Uh, what we're looking at is um kicking off september 12th 
which is a Sunday, but that's when she'll load up all the initial content. So it'll be five weeks from September 12th going forward. So I think it would go into the third week of October, October. second yeah. week of October, something like that. Um, this is the creativity on the Serger program that she had spoke about. Many of you have already taken earlier this year and we're gonna rerun it. <laughs> so uh, this includes a kit um, with all the, the samples, fabrics that you'll be using, some unique stuff. Um, a three ring binder with a bunch of tips and sheets within so you can follow along with ease. And also um, uh, all the virtual videos that Lori will be consistently loading throughout each week. And there'll be some live sessions too. The live session dates we didn't pin down yet because we really need to get a handful more people in the program. Um, but if you sign up before August 1st, it's $69.99. After August 1st, the, the price would have to go up to $84.99, which is the regular price. So it is a great class. Uh, I think we see a few comments here. I, I can't tell you how many positive feedback points we got from those that attended. Absolutely. I think mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like a boot camp, I, I'd say, but a self-paced boot camp, which is really the beauty. Don't get hung up on the dates. You have a lot of time to complete each of the instructional um, mm -hmm. techniques that are, are provided. And um, ultimately, it really uh, gets you engaged with your sur serger. <laughs> and with each of the stitches. So it, um, it is very helpful if you're, if you're a little timid. Scott, I went to Baby Lock with you and we took a surgery class and yet I learned a lot from Lori. Yeah. Um, yeah. She calls them Lori's hints and it's things that are like, yeah, wow, I, that's great. That's it great. really helps. And, and I think she is just a phenomenal teacher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really is, I mean, she's, She's calm, and, calm yeah. and, and she, systematic, you know, and she's there to help you. Like, even yeah. if you're not live and when you do go live, when you ask your questions or if you're typing in that Facebook post in that private group, she answers relatively quick and walks mm -hmm. you through it and helps. I mean, we, we got to see, I mean, she's there to help you. She wants you to play with your surgers and learn them and enjoy them and She's there for you. She's which, a teacher's teacher. Yeah, she, really, she is. She really is. Yep. Um, I, I've thoroughly enjoyed you know, working with her, but also learning from her as well. So this will kick off in September. Again, don't get hung up on the dates because it's self-paced. Um, you really have five weeks to, to do it, mm -hmm. but she gives it to you in segments to um, so you're not biting off the whole elephant at once, right. which is nice. Um, and it's it, what the requirement is, though, you have to have uh, your own Facebook uh, account. That's how she's doing it all through Facebook in a private group. So I do want to say that. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm excited. I'm excited that that's up and running. It's on our website, but it's in our system. So please just call if you want to sign up. If you're on the waiting list, please call to sign up officially. Oh, yes. Good. Um, good. That way we're we're getting that rolling. OK. Um, yeah, and I still see a bunch of comments that everyone that did it take the program really loved her class. Okay, uh, Surgeon Share. So we got, uh, well, half a dozen or so projects. Um, now, we, I know it's the, towards the end of the season here. So this is the season finale. It is the, this season, is the finale. season finale. I think next season we need to see some more ladies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have Anna Wilson. Uh, she used her wave stitch to join blocks around the edge and it on a table runner. Great idea, and I love that fabric. I like the colors, yeah, nice. Fits well, fits yes, the table well. Um, Beth Griffiths, pretty daisy crossbody bag designed by Lori Hernandez um, from her Surge Fun Club. And she incorporated using the serger. And then she also had the embroidery machine, which she did the embroidery. Um, that pattern is from the Surge Fun Club. Wow, well, say that a few times. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And we got Kathy Ooh. Myers, um, a practical surging this month. Uh, this is a hairnet. So 
Oh, okay. Hairnet maybe for work or certain. Um... She has to wear a hairnet at work, so she made oh, these to wear. So, she, so she's, she's a fashion. fashionable, fashionable oh. hairnet. Nice. Instead of those things i don't even know <laughs> fishnet on your head i don't even know what you call those uh wow cool. marcy uh marcy did on um, the wave stitch around the red white razzle finishes on the kimberbell red white and bloom quilt using fabrics from huh, aurora sewing center winnings which is our facebook live that we do also used asc buffalo fabric for the border and in many didn't, of the blocks didn't that come out great oh I, my I, gosh i just realized just noticed, that that was i love how people are incorporating yeah. that into projects yeah. i know so cool that's great to see. that's great like i thought it was fireworks and then when she, i read it then no. i realized no it's our fabric and that just tells me yeah like you said marcy happy summer oh, summer's on with this week right yeah it is Looking i don't good. even get my summer clothes out <laughs> Uh, Jan Inwards, May project from Serger Fun Club, or Serge Fun Club, nope, Serger Fun Club, sorry, use the embroidery machine, sewing machine, and the serger to create this quilt. Wow, just need to bind it. Just do a wave stitch. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Uh, fabrics from Hawaii. Oh, oh, from her trip to Hawaii. That yeah. sounds wonderful. Appliques are in from Hawaii, embroidery blocks from the serger, textured blocks. Uh, back looks just as nice as the front. Yeah, yeah it, it does. Sure does. Wow. Cool. Yeah, that is very nice. And we have Irene Root. Um, she oh. did, well, the one on the left is uh, when she, so those that took Lori's Hernandez's uh, Serger Techniques program, there was a follow up last, uh, well, I guess springish, April say, maybe, shortly after, with it. another program called Serger Creative Techniques. And quilt. she, it, and yeah, quilt, sorry. And uh, Irene did the quilt there on her left picture. Uh, we're using the, well, looks like Catitude mostly, but some other other fabrics as well, which looks great. I, I like, and everyone did different fabrics and they really pulled together very nicely. So good job there. And then uh, looks like she complimented it with a, uh, a pillow. All on our surgery. All on our surgery, cool. Very nice. And then Karen Hawkwater, she also took Lori's serger technique um, quilt class. And this is, see, and if you, we put the two pictures side by side, you'd see that both of them look totally different, different fabrics, but look how beautiful they all are. Um, this is Karen Hawkwater's quilt. Good job, Karen. Ooh, today. Ooh. Okay, so today, um, the discount code, if you buy online, is pillowcase15. I think I'll just say this after, I don't know, we had sewing club, embroidery club, serger club, and this is probably the eighth of each. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're approaching 22 to 24 clubs total. Um, yes. What I'm finding is it's easier to call the store or come in the store to make purchases. It's a little cleaner. Uh, the website purchases seems like some people miss the discount code or have made an error and then there's back work to do mm -hmm. so or they hit shipping and you don't need shipping because right. you live local so i would encourage you instead of buying online i think it's a little bit easier just to pick up the phone and call us uh certainly there's times when the phone's a little busier than others but um you know i think we're we're pretty good there yep uh so anyhow that was all i had to say there but if you are going to buy online pillowcase 15. and then some of the well, the primary special here is if you uh, buy the pillowcase dreams pattern, which is the one on the left, <laughs> you get to pick whatever uh, six ninety nine pattern, one of those for free. So you can get the, the easy pillowcase, the easy tote gift bag, uh, or the um, easy pillow cover. So you end up with two patterns for ten ninety nine. So the the pillowcase dreams would not be discounted. It would be a full 1099. Now, alternatively, well, I will, I will get that in a, into a, in a second here. <laughs> there. Alternatively, <laughs> if you just don't care, you just want one and really the others don't appeal or you want a different one, well, then they're 15% off. So oh. you can kind of slice it however you want. Uh, going back, the bridging, which you may want to incorporate into any of these pillowcases, 20% are off, just one yard cut is the is the minimum. 
And then this wonderful Batiste fabric, 20% off, minimum half yard cuts. Uh, the heirloom cotton is the super soft stuff. I mean, it's like, it's, it's, beautiful. it's your bed sheets, you know, your, your high end bed sheets. So, um, you know, that's, it's very nice material. I was, I think I've been I was pleasantly it surprised. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is really nice. Okay. Um, and then, you know, there's a variety of notions and feet and feet packages that are also on sale as part of club. So, uh, and then of course the serger threads, you get 15% off. So anyhow, enough of that. Let's get on to our, our raffle here for serger club. Our last one. Oh, Alyssa, oh, did you, you, you forgot to tell them. What did I forget to tell them? We both forgot to tell them. Um, oh, appreciation. Yeah, so oh, because we're, make sure we're not that. having a banquet this year uh, for a, a, a variety of logistical, and confusing rule reasons. Well, the rules just changed as of yeah. today. <laughs> so, you know, the whole thing, it, it's just been a, a real challenge for everybody to get through the past, navigate the rules and, and mm -hmm. safety and everything for the past year. But we are working to plan just amongst Aurora Sewing Center and the two stores, a something that is special for customers so we're not sure what it'll look like we're not sure what it'll taste like but it's coming to a aurora sewing center store near you in the coming <laughs> week slash month so stay tuned we'll announce it once we get our ducks in a row Alyssa first has to go on vacation so once she gets back yeah, we'll, we'll sort out the details just um make sure you pay attention to your emails and our facebook yeah. posts because that is really the way we're gonna let you all know what our plan is and what it is so Make sure if you know you don't unsubscribe from Aurora Sewing Center because if you do, that's fine, mm -hmm. but you won't know what's going on and then we are, we get in trouble. Because yeah. <laughs> so, this, this will really be our last opportunity to say something. We didn't say anything right. during embroidery uh, and yeah, or sewing better. club, but now that things are loosening up a touch, you know, we want to do something yes. and uh, certainly won't be the banquet. It won't ever be like the banquet and it may not be like other things that we would love to do right. but we will do something so that was that's our game plan yeah okay so let's get on to the winner winner chicken hey okay, well, roll it dinner maybe 2020 Not <laughs> two <laughs> another chicken dinner yeah. <laughs> All right. There's not last, much able to go around. Last spin of the club season and the winner is Anna Wilson. All right, Anna. Congratulations. Good gracious. Anna, right. I'm going to say Williamsville, but I could be wrong. No, Williamsville. Williamsville. Okay. okay. The, yep. I had, sorry, uh, your bag's over there, so yeah. I'll put it at the front and, <laughs> and make sure that we have it for you up front. Okay. All right, Carol. So yes. take it away, Yay. Carol. All right. Yeah, we get it started. Wait. Give her some needs, space. Yeah, she needs space. Okay, uh, the first thing we're going to start off with is the Pleasant Dreams pillowcase, which is behind me here. Um, it has a lot of, a couple of different techniques on it. You've got your pin tucks, you've got inserting your beading, and you've got ruffling and binding. So we're going to go over some of those techniques. Um, the pattern is written for an eight thread, and then there is a supplement to the pattern that gives you all the options that you need if you're doing it on a four thread machine. We're not gonna leave you out. We have an option for four thread on every single technique. So the first thing that we're doing is going to be um, a pin tuck. Um, switch me over to this. Yeah. Getting a nice close up here so you can move too, too much of a close up. Okay. Um, let me, you, if you hit the unzoom. So over here. Got my, my cane here because I have a new knee now. Okay, so the way that this is set up 
you have your pin tuck foot on. Now this is for an eight thread machine. We are set up for a cover stitch. I have my number two and three needles in. And the way that this works, whenever you're on cover stitch, your stitch selector is gonna be down. Your blade is gonna be locked. And this comes with your foot. And the way that it fits on is it just lays right in there. Now the foot comes with two different ones. This one has the long hole on it. The other one has a slot that you can put a cord through if you wanted to do a corded pin tuck. So it goes on like that. And then all you do is you just start stitching. And it is going to form your pin tuck. Now, if you don't have an eight thread machine, you cannot use this pin tuck foot. But the alternative is to just what we have is you're going to use a three thread rolled edge. So these are the pin tucks that are made on the eight thread. On a four thread machine, you're simply folding your fabric and stitching along the edge with a rolled hem. And then this is the look that you're going to get. So the look, both in there, the look really isn't that much different doing it on the four thread. You have the stitching on top, whereas on this one you don't. But you still can get your same pin tuck look. So that's the first step that we're going to do is doing the pin tucks. And if you look in the directions, you're measuring up, you're doing the pin tuck, then you're using the edge of your foot to do the next pin tuck. And then you're measuring up again to the three inches and putting the pin tuck in. And eventually your beading is going to be going in between those pin tucks. A lot of uh, different thread changes here in order to show you all the different techniques. That's pretty much the pin tuck. So the next thing that I want to switch over to and show you, um, and on your directions, you have really, really good directions as far as how to measure and press and everything like that. So the directions are great to show you everything that you need to do to get this done. They're asking you, can you speak up and touch? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Um, so the three thread rolled edge is what you're using if you are on a four thread machine. And the difference in a rolled edge is when you are See. When you are setting up your stitch length, these are your standard, and then your rolled are actually within a circle. So you have a line around it. So when you're setting up for a rolled edge, you want to make sure that the numbers that you're using are encased in that extra line, that, that extra oval there that'll give you the rolled edge. That's the only difference in getting a rolled edge. It's your regular stitching. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is the making the trim and the bias binder. So for the eight thread machine, we'll be using the bias binder. For a four thread machine, we have a very pretty alternative here. And, um, The edging is just 
man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's on the floor. Okay. We have this really pretty binding. And what it is, is it's open. So you can put it over and then it's got this lace edge on it. So I thought it was perfect for the pillowcases. It gives you a really, really pretty look. And we have several different alternatives. And while I get the machine switched over, maybe you can show them all the options of the different oh. kinds of uh, crochet edges that we have. Set up for... Your, the pillowcase that it was a pattern, pleasant dream pattern. What's it, what size pillow is it geared for? Uh, you can do a standard pillowcase, a queen pillowcase or a king pillowcase. Um, you just have to just change the size of your yeah, so you main body of your pillow. You want, really? Yes. Just a matter of adjusting your body or your fabric. Mm -hmm. Is this the one that you used, Carol? Yes, it's the one I used. And the price on that is. Um, Ninety nine. Pretty. We we have these at the Williamsville store. So if you're interested in a color, well, we can just leave them out, I guess. Um, didn't put them in the flyer, but they are at the Williamsville store. My coffee cup is not for sale. So with the binder attachment, you can actually, this is once again, eight thread, and you can use it with several different stitches. You can use it with a chain stitch, or you can use it with a cover stitch. Um, I'm set up for a chain stitch center. This is what the foot looks like. It's going to come going to come up closed like this. I'm going to pull this out and open it up. And when you using your standard foot on your machine, when you set it up, you're going to want the where the guide is on the foot to be just to the left of your needle. And you use your little screws, you have your cover stitch plate on there. And at home, I played with this a lot to get it set up. So hopefully everything is gonna work here in front of everybody. Here's one that I was looking for. That's another one of the cover stitch ed or the edges, just putting it on. And what I did is I just went to my sewing machine. It's open-ended, you just wrap it around and then just top stitch it on. And it gives you a really pretty edge. So in the directions, they said to cut your fabric an inch and a half for this. Um, when I actually looked it up, the directions for the actual foot in the book, all mixed up. Directions in the book tell you to um, cut it at 36 millimeters, which come out to 1.42 inches. So I actually cut like about an eighth of an inch off and I found that I had a much better fit on it. It's going to your handy dandy we need to come up a little bit. There you go. You cut an edge on it. You're putting it with the wrong side towards you. And you are just sliding it in. Oh, 
also fits here. And what I found is I played with this a lot because I had never used it before. I found that if I let my excess drag on the ground, that it twisted on me. So I made sure that my excess was up here and I actually used my little tray on the side, to kind of hold it up and back so that it was more out of the way and not dragging. And it did, at one point I was putting it on something and I all of a sudden I looked and my right side was facing me. So that was wrong. So I'm gonna go through there. I have to use my tweezers because I have to pull the fabric out and I have to get it started under the foot because otherwise there's nothing for it to grab onto to get started. And what it's doing is it's turning it under and it's actually making binding. So. It's here to put some binding on. We had everything all set to do this class um, prior to going in for my knee surgery. So it's like, oh, okay, <laughs> get it together. What you do then is your piece that you're putting this on just lays in here. They tell you to lay it along the mark. I found it, if I just kind of snugged it up underneath there, I have this actual piece that's going to get the binding on it right tucked into where that fold is forming on the binding. I'm going to start off it's just making a little bit of stitching. If it's not grabbing, you need a little bit more underneath your foot. Can you repeat the name of this foot? This is the 10 millimeter knit binding foot. So is the binding cut straight around the bias? Uh, you, the bias is cut straight. You do not have to be, make it on the bias. And then on your pattern, you just keep going and you're actually making some, you're actually making what's going to eventually be woven through your, your beading. Okay. And weave this is- through the bridging. Yeah, weave it through the bridging. So you're, and that's what it looks like. I obviously wouldn't use this color thread, but it's it's just giving me a nice bind. Could you use this on a quilt or something thicker? Absolutely not. It works really well. I'm putting it on one layer of fabric. You maybe could get it to do two layers. I don't think I would ever do any more than that. This is not made to put binding on a quilt. It just, it would not, feed through here enough, it's too thin. It just, it's for doing individual things. So if you're a garment person and you're putting it on mm -hmm. um, necklines or hems or anything like that, that's where it would be very useful. Okay, so the next thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna put in your beading and the clear foot is very helpful in putting in the beading. Your beading has room on either side. It also has this nice edge of the actual beading and that's what you're going to stitch along. And that's why the clear foot is very helpful because you can see exactly where you're stitching. You're gonna be doing it with a three thread overlock. And this would be for either machine or is. This attachment is only for the eight thread. The alternative was making your own binding or using this really pretty delicate binding. This is for either machine. You're gonna just go ahead and stitch it in. It's gonna be in between. And then eventually you're going to take your handy dandy little bodkin and you're gonna just go back and forth and put this through what you've made. Okay, so you've added your beading You've woven your beading through. And the next thing we're gonna work on is the ruffle. 
So I need to reset the machine to do a ruffle. So talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> time to ask questions yes anybody has any questions uh anybody wants to pick on scott or Alyssa? great time for that this is a great time for that <laughs> so the, the knit binding is uh, not a foot it's actually an attachment i accidentally clicked but... attachment. so i am going to switch to a four thread overlock so right now my machine is on the cover stitch side and I'm gonna be stitching over to overlock. In order to do that, I need to change my tray. And one of the most important things that I have found is when I go to thread later, like I've been using cover stitch side and then I go to thread up my machine to do regular stitching, I forget to put up the stitch selector lever. And if you do that, you can stitch and stitch and stitch and it's not working. What did I do wrong? I forgot to put that up. So I put it up. I turn my hand wheel towards me so that it comes up. And I also want to bring my blade back up. When your blade is down, it says lock. When your blade is up, it doesn't say anything at all. Okay. So I'm all set. I'm going to go ahead and thread my machine up for a fourth thread. Something in here is caught. So I have to move my needles and I am not having a good day at losing things. There it is. <laughs> Take my now. As far as your needles go, the um, I'm going to use position one and two. Um, your I like to put my needles in with my foot off because I can drop my needle down into where it's going to go and then bring it up and it's perfect every time. Um, this is a store machine, so sometimes the things are tightened. I do not tighten mine. Um, depending upon your what kind of surgery you have, um, the Triumph, and I believe the Ovation, and most of the later ones, these screws will not come out. So you don't have to worry about losing a screw if you're um, loosening it too much, and you don't have to tighten it up in between taking it in and out. Okay, so I'm going to go. Be using my lower looper. Make sure that my thread comes probably down to my lap. And then I put it in. Using my upper looper. Once again, a good length of thread is just kind of bringing it down to your lap. And another thing that I found is sometimes I'm threaded and I go to test it and my threads haven't gone through, they haven't caught. One of the things I found that was my mistake on that is I had my foot down when I was threading. Your foot needs to be up, no, tension off when you're threading, okay? Then I'm going to use my O2. I've changed my threading over to overlock. And I do thread mine individually because most of the times I'm using the exactly the same color thread on both of those. And um, so I'm, do three. I'm using the same color thread. I don't want to twist my threads. Um, it's okay. It really doesn't make a huge amount of difference, but I do want to make 
I just like to thread where it's coming from the stand into the correct needle. And that's why I thread my needles one at a time. Just personal preference thing. I've done it, I've done it where I had, um, I wanted to do something quick and I've just taken a, an O2 needle and moved it over to the old one position and left it up here and it's stitched just fine, but you don't know. So do it right. Your tray just slides in. Oh my God. <laughs> I thought I put it on silent. <laughs> I'm surging. Use my ruffling foot. Everything out and ready here. And as always, before I start doing anything, I just do a quick stitch just to make sure I'm stitching okay. And I'm not. Threading, foot up. Do my loopers again. Seems like every time I teach this class, I don't get my loopers in. I, I told you that when we were setting up. Yeah, when we were setting up, Alyssa said, make sure you test the machine. It's like, no, I'm gonna be switching around. So there's no, no way to have it all set. <laughs> I did, um, Pam Massey used to be a baby lock rep and she's now with Bernina and her thing talking about the Bernina surgers was, you don't have to fuss with getting them in the hole. It's like, okay, so I don't think it's a real big deal to get this in the hole, but I guess you people that have gone with a Bernina surger, you don't have to fuss with getting them in the hole. <laughs> we can get so you that, the that, one, that, Carol, for you to that, appreciate that feature too, you know. I have not had an occasion to play too much with um, the Bernina. So maybe now the clubs are over and we have this break, I'll be, I'll have to play. Okay, I got it that time. So the way the ruffler works, you're taking your, you want your hem to already be on the end of your pillowcase. So your ruffle is ready to go. You have your differential feed up on two. That is what makes your ruffle. This is your differential feed. That's normal. I've got it all the way up to the top of two. That's another thing to remember when you are finished with this and you take it off is to make sure that you took. So just kind of get started going with my ruffle. And then your fabric that you are attaching the ruffle to, the bottom is what is ruffling. So I've got my fabrics right sides together, which the Batiste is pretty forgiving on that. Your fabric that you're adding the ruffle to fits into the top slot. There's a slot here and the fabric is into that top slot. I kind of like to take my fingers and put one finger I'm holding underneath. I've got a finger in between and my thumb holding it on top to kind of guide it. And of course I pulled it out. Did not step with I have a stitch length of four and a stitch width of 7.5. You would never use these threads with this. But what you wind up with is your lower piece. It's got a really nice ruffle with it. And it's attached to your nice flat piece on the top. Mm -hmm. So this is easy enough, and this is on either machine, the four thread or the eight thread. 
got our ruffle on. And then it's just basically the construction of the pillowcase. And for the construction of the pillowcase, they're telling you to just go ahead and serge your pillowcase together. Just surging your edges together. Stick with my fourth thread just to ease here. Standard foot. What you're going to do is when you're putting it together, you're going to start off stitching. Then you're going to grab that tail and bring that tail around to the front. Don't catch it in your foot. And instead of having to thread it through at the end, that's going to catch that thread. Okay, I don't know what I did here. It's going to catch your thread in there. Now, if you want, you can just go ahead and do that seam on your serger and it's going to show on the inside. If you want what's called a French seam, then you're going to do a, go ahead and do your serger with the fabric wrong sides together. Then you're going to turn it inside out and you're going to go to your sewing machine and stitch it. And that's going to enclose your machine and close your seam and give you what looks more like, we're going to be done here. We're going to go to bed. It's going to give you what looks more like a French seam, it's enclosed. You're not gonna see those threads. You're not gonna see any edges. So. so. What your seams are gonna look like if you do just your standard, you're just going to get your serger thread showing, which is, it's perfectly fine. It's a nice look. It's sturdy. There's no problem whatsoever. If you don't like that look, then you're going to go ahead and do what's the French seam, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, on this particular pillowcase, as I was doing something, I caught on my... Um, blade and I put a cut in it so it has an embroidery on it. There's a will, there's a way, right? Okay, the next thing that I wanna talk about, um, what we did is, this was the pillowcase pattern and kind of thought, well, this is the end of the season. Let's, let's do a little bit more with it than just a pillowcase. So we came up with some other patterns. Now, as far as the pillowcase, um, somebody asked about sizes. It can even make a pretty little travel pillow. And it's exactly the same thing. It's just a little different size. What I want to talk about here is the corners. Um, I had a very old tool that I got. And I asked Alyssa to try and find it for this class. And they no longer make it. So she did find an alternate place to get it. It's on order. It has not come in. They have not even answered that it's going to be coming. But what it is, is it makes nicer corners. If you can see where as you get a little pointy thing here, it gives you a much nicer look on the corner of your pillow. And we are trying to get them. Um, as soon as we have them in, we will let you know. But so the first thing we um, did was we're going to talk about the reading pillow. And the reading pillow is, was, they were pretty popular um, for reading. Reading for kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it makes a great gift for a child. And what they do is they're done with ruffles and piping. And you can do them. So in the pattern, you have many, many options. You have the option to do it with 
piping along the top and along the outside, maybe put a handle on it to carry it, do some embroidery on it. You have directions to do a pieced front on it with a ruffle and lots of other ruffles. This one got a little gaudy, <laughs> but I was playing and just having fun. And then this one is just a novelty fabric and then making it. They have a zipper on the back. And so we already talked about ruffling. Now I wanna talk about piping and inserting your zipper. So, uh, yeah. So the ruffles is gonna be pretty much exactly the same thing as the other one. The piping, we're using a three thread overlock. Um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to set my machine up for three thread. See now in an ideal situation, we would have all kinds of machines set up and just move down the line. <laughs> you wouldn't have to wait while I'm setting things up. But Scott just didn't give me that many machines to work with. So I'm just going to get rid of my red thread. And I'm gonna just move my needle position Needle is 01, so I'm good with that. My stitch length is three. My stitch width is three. And my stitch selector is going down to B for my three thread. All right, so putting in a zipper, I'm going to use my cording foot. Up here. Three threads, and I've got three threads here, so I should be good. So I put my zip using my cording foot, which has a groove in the bottom. It's the same thing that you use for making piping. You also use it for zipper insertion. So I put my zipper down, open. and I put right sides together and I went ahead and I stitched that side. Now I'm ready to stitch the second piece of fabric on. So what I did is I line up my fabric with my zipper and I put a little snip in my zipper where I'm gonna begin and where I'm gonna end. And that way, when I lay my fabric on their right sides together, I know that it's going to be exactly across from the other fabric. So I have my zipper open. I'll lay my zipper in with my cording feet. And this is a, um, I'm gonna put my teeth in where the cord would go. This is a short zipper, so it's a little bit harder to get in there. You always wanna use a zipper that's too large for your project, and then you don't have to futz like this. Something like four to six inches larger? Yeah. And then you're just lining it up with where that top little cut was and where that bottom little cut was. And boom. My needle is way over gonna hit my foot. Why did, what did I do wrong? I put on the piping foot instead of the cording foot. <sighs> oh man. Well, better than a needle blowing up. I got my cording <laughs> foot out. I know I did. Where'd it go? 
I had everything out. Thought I had everything out. Look for my recording foot. Sorry, guys. I'm sure you don't ever lose anything in your sewing rooms, right? Recording foot. It is out. Is it on the floor now, maybe? I don't know what I did with the corning foot. I am sorry, guys. Scott is going to get me a corning foot. I'm sure mine will turn up somewhere. I had everything laid out. I really did. <laughs> sorry. Oh, man. It does. Carol, it's only forty two ninety nine. Oh, only forty two ninety nine to get myself oh, a new and that's before foot. the discount. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, we found out the price of it, right? That's a good thing. If anybody wants a cording foot, you're going to use this to make your cording and to insert your zippers. So now maybe we can actually stitch it. <laughs> Under there, I got my fabric right sides together with my zipper. Zipper into my cording foot, fabric right sides together. Ordinarily, I'd take some time and really line it up with that, my little cuts, but now I'm starting to feel dumb. <laughs> so, You are cutting off excess on the zipper. It does not matter. The stitches look horrible. That's okay. And then your zipper is in. The next thing, oh my God, it's twisted. There we go. Your zipper's in. And it does not look like this because mine's awful. Is your um my stitching is but your differential on this oh my my differential is still on gathering that was my problem okay so that's it's a your different zipper. look <laughs> sure is the next thing is piping and i have already made my piping all you do is take your cord wrap your fabric around put it in your put, foot and pipe around it when you want to insert your piping, what you're going to do is you're going to start off by pulling back your fabric a little bit and cutting it. So you have just fabric up here and no piping inside. Then when you're ready to put it on, you're going to start on a side. And you're going to start stitching beyond where you remove that piping. You're going to stitch down to your corner. When you get about a quarter inch from your corner, you're going to put a little snip in the seam of your piping so that your piping can turn off to the side. And then you're just going to stitch off. You've got that nice curve now there. And you're going to go ahead and line it up again. quarter inch away, little snip so it'll turn. I did not do bias on my cording. Um, if you were doing something where you were going to be maybe stitching around corners, not a new day. 
If you were doing something where you were stitching around corners, you might want to use bias. My little looper is undone. Make sure I'm surging okay before I put that back in there. I'm just, you know, really like making all these mistakes today so that you guys will feel good when it happens at home. Not really a mistake. The machine just decided somehow that I want to move too hard. I thought, you know, not attaching. Not attaching. Okay, so I'm just going to show you what I would do. So I'm going to just keep stitching all the way around. Instead of making me wait while I figure this out, I'm going to stitch. I'm going to stitch. I'm going to stitch. When I get to almost where it's going to join, I'm going to cut my piping to size. I'm going to pull it back. And I'm going to remove about a half an inch of piping again. So now I have empty piping and empty piping. When I come to that point, I'm going to put both of them kind of off at an angle so that where there is piping in there and where there is piping in there are going to meet. And you're not going to see any break in it. I'm just going to keep going right around. So that's pretty much, you can have a lot of fun with the different things. There's a lot of different embroidery sayings for the reading pillows. Um, you can look up things. You can make it specific to a book. If you're not putting a ruffle or binding along the top or piping along the top of this pillow area, I would put a piece of ribbon there because you want to reinforce that because your books are going to be sitting in there. So you do want to do something to kind of reinforce that a little bit. Give it some meat. Give it some meat. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is the easy pillowcase. And all basically, you lay down your pillow on a piece of fabric. We're going to go up here. is you're going to lay down your pillowcase on a piece of fabric lay out your fabric lay the pillow on top decide how much overlap you want in it and on this one i did a wave stitch along the outer edge you're going to finish off this edge you're going to finish off the inside edge you're just going to fold it over until it fits and close up the other two ends and you have a quick and easy pillowcase. This would be really nice to use um, for holidays, Co cover all your pillowcases with some pretty holiday fabric and making the corners nice with the tool that hopefully we will get. So that's the quick and easy pillowcase. You have all the directions in the pattern. It is super quick and easy. Okay, now I'm going to zoom here. And we're going to kind of go down here because I'm going to show you how to do a quick and easy serger pillowcase. Oh, would you come over and do thread so I'm ready? Yeah. Um, doesn't matter, just the three thread will be fine. So what you're doing on the quick and easy pillowcase is you're going to have the header, you're going to have the body of your pillowcase, and you're going to have either piping or a little piece of accent. The, if you want to do something special on this pillowcase, if you want to embroider on it, 
you have to think ahead of time on your header where you're going to put your embroidery. You want to know which way you want your embroidery facing. Do you want it facing in towards your pillow? Do you want it facing out? Basically, you are putting your embroidery on a quarter because this is going to be folded in half. And just the front is showing. Or you might want to do a border print and go all the way around one side. That would be very pretty too. And I mean, you, especially if you're doing it for a wedding or something like that, making something special. But before you start putting your pillowcase together, you have to think, which way do I want that facing? It'd be the same thing if you were using a directional fabric. Stop, play with it, think about which way you want that facing before you start putting your pillowcase together. So you're going to lay out this piece. You're going to take your accent piece and lay that on there. Then you're going to take the body of your pillowcase and you're going to put it, this is right side up. This is folded in half, so it doesn't matter. This is going right side down. And I just put a couple of clips just to kind of hold it in place as I'm getting ready to do it. Then you take the body of your pillowcase. Now they call this hot dog. They call it burrito. They, there's like a million different names for this method of making a pillowcase. Oh, you're not talking about me then. <laughs> no. <laughs> you're rolling that up. You're bringing your accent fabric up and around and you're clipping it or pinning it. I, um, as far as a serger, I really prefer clips to pins. I think it makes life so much easier. And you're making sure that the body of your pillowcase is well away from your seam. So you're not going to be catching it in your seam. And then now on here, we have directions for the different sizes. Um, a standard pillowcase takes three quarters of a yard, a queen takes a yard and an eighth, and a king takes a yard and a third. Um, those directions are not with the um, first pillowcase that we showed, but we do have them here with the quick and easy pillowcase. So we've got this all set, we're ready to go. And we're just- Can I do a test so first? Please, Scott's because I don't Scott's ever do want to do it on my project. <laughs> There's too many horns and whistles to accidentally bump. Scott read it for me while we were talking. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I think we're in pretty good shape there. Okay, good. Excuse me. So then we're just going to and I even have, we even did that with the pipe we put on. I'm gonna use my standard foot. So I can find that one. And I'm gonna stitch along here. Basically, you could use a three thread, a four thread. Then, um, I've heard people say, yeah, we can go to the big. They call this birthing your pillowcase. <laughs> and you're just going to pull the inside of your pillowcase out. And at the same time, you're turning your accent piece right side out. And I decided to do a little one so it wouldn't take too much time. And it actually makes it a little bit harder to turn. Smaller. So. 
once you get to this point, you have a pillowcase, but also I'm going to show you how we can play with this pillowcase. Okay. okay. And turn it into a dress, a shirt, a pool cover up, a nightgown. Um, quick, easy, and really cute. Um, I first became aware of these when there was a little promotion called Dresses for Africa. Um, but I've seen so many different things done with them. So you have your pillowcase. All you're going to do is stitch your side and your bottom, and you've got your pillowcase made. So if you would decide that you wanted to make this into something else, I have a couple of dresses here that I've made. I like to take the whole hanger off. Got a little dress made. <laughs> I just don't want you falling down. <laughs> and also one for an American Girl doll. Because I wanted to show you the different methods. Now, I have seen these, like I said, made out of terry cloth for a pool cover up. I've seen them made short for a shirt. I've seen them made for nightgowns. Um, I mean, think about all of the options. Put some pockets on here, put a ruffle, put rolls of ruffles. I mean, you can do so many different things with it. And basically, all you're doing is you're taking this pillowcase that you made. And I put my back together first so that I had my seam down the back. But you are laying it out. This is your pillowcase. And you are cutting armholes. The armhole sizes, it gives you some recommendations in the pattern. The width and the length, I also give you some recommendations. Um, I measured my granddaughter. She was 29 inches. This is going to be for her. So cute. It's really cute. And then, and it's just, I mean, it's just the pillowcase. So this, this is the, the header, header of the pillowcase. pillowcase. So then what do you, so you cut, you cut your sleeves out uh -huh. and then you can either just turn them under and then make a casing at the top and then run this through. And you can, I've seen them where they put a thing in the front. So the bow is in the front. I mean, you can put this bow pretty much anywhere. So you're just going ahead and making this on your serger, sliding it through and tying it. The alternate way to do it is to take binding and bind all the way around the sleeve. And that also turns into your tie for the top of your shirt. Cool. Really a cute idea. So you have all of these all of this is in the, the pattern and it's included in the quick and easy pillowcase and the dress are all one pattern. They're in there together. Um, the last thing that was kind of pillow casey and decided to make was a little tote bag. And we just basically took what you would make for a pillowcase. Put, trash. <laughs> you're gonna finish off the ends of two pieces make two casings stitch them onto the top and then when you put your ribbon through your ribbon goes through one side around out the other side and then also the opposite way tie one in together and you've got a cinch bag and if you want it to be able to stand, I mean, these are great for a quick gift bag. You always have nice fabric that you can use for a quick gift bag. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your, the directions are in there to, to make your corners so that your bag will stand up really nicely. So you could make it into a wine gift bag if you tightened it up. Oh yeah, with... you, you can make this absolutely any size. If you have somebody going to college, make it out of mesh. It makes a great laundry, laundry. bag. But any little kid, grandkid, 
a beach bag. I, I mean, your daughter have, loves bags. They're teens and they're mm -hmm. putting stuff in bags. And yes. Toys and stuffing it in oh. the corner of the closet so, or dragging it around with them. You're giving somebody Lego for Christmas, give them a bag to yep. hold it. Oh. I mean, that's nice. And the other thing you can do is you can put a little bitty, um, just a little loop down here and you can thread this through the loop and then it becomes a backpack. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. so many ideas, so much, so many fun things to do and play and I mean, I, I actually think that for the pool, I'm going to make myself one of these really quick and easy to throw on when you get out of the water. Mm -hmm. um, and soft flannel, make them nightgowns. I mean, there's just, depending on your fabric, you can really have a lot of fun and really decorate them up. Kind of make sure you post it on behind the scenes if you make one. We want to see how creative you are with them. Perfect. And I think that's pretty much, that's everything. So I had fun making up the different patterns and playing and we tried to add to the original program and give you a lot of extra options. So hopefully you enjoyed it. And um, we'll see you all online. Thank you everyone. Thanks for uh, participating in Serger Club. And thank you, Carol. You've done a thank couple you. this year, this season. So we will uh, be in touch soon. Bye. Bye guys. <laughs>